Beneath the crowded suburbs of Naples, scientists say the crust above Campi Flegre is breaking apart from within, its structure collapsing in ways never seen before. Half a million lives rest atop a volcano that experts now call the world's most dangerous. Why are earthquakes here shredding the ground instead of shaking it? And what does the new study reveal about how close we are to disaster? The answers start with one seismic investigation no one can ignore. The Campi Flagre caldera sprawls beneath the city's western edge, a vast depression measuring nearly 12 by 15 kilometers. Here, the ordinary rhythms of life, morning traffic, children walking to school, shopkeepers opening their shutters, unfold directly above a restless volcanic system. Over 500,000 people live inside the official red zone, the area identified by scientists as most at risk if the volcano's structure fails. This is not some distant hazard on the horizon. It's a threat woven into the daily fabric of Naples and its suburbs, where ancient streets and modern apartment blocks stand atop a landscape shaped by fire and upheaval. The caldera's boundaries cut through neighborhoods, marking the invisible edge of one of Earth's most densely populated volcanic danger zones. In Pozzuoli, the heart of the red zone, reminders of past unrest are never far away. Many residents still recall the crisis of the early 1980s, when the ground began to rise and the Earth trembled for months on end. Between 1982 and 1984, the land lifted by nearly two meters. More than 16,000 earthquakes rattled the region in just two years, forcing the evacuation of 40,000 people and leaving thousands of homes cracked or condemned. That episode, known as the Brady Seism Crisis, did not end in eruption, but it left scars both physical and psychological. Families were displaced for months, businesses shuttered, and a lingering sense remained that the ground beneath their feet could never be fully trusted again. Today, the population exposed to volcanic risk is even greater. New construction has filled in once empty stretches of land, and the city's sprawl has pressed ever closer to the caldera's most active sectors. The official emergency plans, updated after each episode of unrest, now cover half a million residents, more than any other volcano in Europe. For many, the volcano is both a distant memory and a constant presence. Cracks appear in walls after each tremor. Insurance is difficult to obtain. Children grow up hearing stories of sudden evacuations and the strange sulfurous smells that sometimes drift in on the breeze. Scientists at the Vesuvius Observatory, responsible for monitoring the region, have described Campi Flegre as presenting the highest volcanic risk on Earth. Their warnings are not theoretical. The caldera's history includes two prehistoric super eruptions and a more recent event in 1538 that built a new mountain in a matter of days. The director of the observatory has cautioned that no other volcanic system combines such a volatile geological structure with such intense urban exposure. In the words of a recent peer-reviewed study, nearly half a million people live atop the world's most dangerous volcano. In this environment, every new tremor is met with a mix of resignation and anxiety. The memory of the 1980s crisis lingers, shaping how communities respond to official bulletins and emergency drills. Local leaders and scientists work to balance vigilance with reassurance, knowing that the stakes are measured not only in scientific data, but in the lives and futures of hundreds of thousands. Against this backdrop, the latest scientific investigation takes on urgent meaning, not just as a matter of academic interest, but as a question of survival for an entire region. In 2021, a team of geophysicists began a systematic investigation into what was happening beneath the surface of Campi Flegre. The lead researcher, Dr. Marco Giudice Pietro, had watched the region's seismic patterns grow more erratic and intense with each passing year, 
The challenge was not simply to count earthquakes, but to decode their true meaning, how exactly this restless crust was breaking, and what that might reveal about the volcano's future. The group assembled a data set unlike anything previously compiled for the caldera. Over five years, from 2020 through 2025, they cataloged every significant earthquake that rattled the region. 56 in total, each one carefully mapped and analyzed. This was not a routine monitoring effort. The team tracked not only the location and size of each quake, but also the subtle ways energy moved through the crust. How quickly ruptures spread, how much energy was transmitted as shaking, and how much was lost inside the rock itself. The earthquakes under study included two of the strongest ever recorded in the area. Magnitude 4.6 events that struck in 2023 and 2025. But the researchers focused on more than just the headline numbers. They sifted through thousands of seismic records, looking for patterns in the way the Earth was failing. The signals they uncovered pointed to an unfamiliar process, one that did not fit the usual models of tectonic or volcanic earthquakes. At the heart of this inquiry was the question of the cap rock, the thick, brittle layer that acts as a lid over the caldera's volatile reservoir. Earlier crises had left the cap rock damaged, but until now, no study had measured in detail how it was responding to renewed pressure from below. The team's approach combined seismic waveform analysis, ground deformation data, and laboratory tests on rock samples to build a comprehensive picture of the evolving structure beneath Pozzuoli. Every earthquake in their sample became a data point in a larger experiment. By comparing the rupture characteristics of these quakes, the researchers set out to determine whether the crust was behaving like intact rock or something far more compromised. They looked for signs of slow rupture speeds, low energy transmission, and widespread fracturing, clues that the system was no longer simply absorbing stress but actively breaking down from within. The scope of the study was ambitious, stretching across the most turbulent period in recent memory for Campi Flegre. Each new event added urgency and complexity, as the team raced to interpret what the shifting patterns might mean for the safety of the half a million people living above. Their findings would soon challenge long-held assumptions about how volcanic unrest unfolds and how close this system might be to a critical threshold. Hidden Energy the earthquake data told a story that scientists had not expected. Out of 56 significant events measured between 2020 and 2025, every rupture moved at a crawl compared to normal. Instead of tearing through the rock at full speed, these breaks advanced at only 40 to 90% of the usual velocity for seismic waves and solid crust. On paper, the numbers looked almost reassuring. Slower ruptures, less violent shaking. But the real danger hid in the energy budget. For each earthquake, only 10% of the total energy made it to the surface as ground motion. The rest, nearly 90%, vanished before it could even rattle a window. That missing energy was not lost. It was spent deep underground pulverizing the cap rock, the brittle lid that holds back the pressure below Campi Flegre. Different process. This pattern set Campi Flegri apart from almost every other active fault zone. In most tectonic earthquakes, as much as 60 to 90% of the energy is released in seismic waves, sending tremors outwards in all directions. Here, the process was different. The crust was not snapping cleanly. It was grinding, chewing, and wasting energy on internal damage. Scientists describe these as wasteful earthquakes, not because they were weak, but because they were inefficient. The ruptures did not just shake the ground, they dismantled the structure from within, opening new cracks and widening old fractures in a zone already weakened by decades of unrest. Pressure Cooker Dr. Marco Giudice Pietro, who led the seismic analysis, compared the situation to a pressure cooker with thinning walls. The system is not storing up energy for one catastrophic release. It is spending energy every day, making the barrier weaker and weaker. The cap rock, 
once a sturdy seal, was now riddled with micro-fractures. Each event chipped away at its strength, creating a network of pathways that could one day connect the pressurized reservoir below with the surface above. Stark numbers. The numbers were stark. Even the largest earthquakes in the recent swarm, the record-breaking magnitude 4.6 events of 2023 and 2025, followed the same pattern. Slow rupture, low efficiency, high internal damage. Laboratory tests on rock samples from beneath Podzuoli confirmed what the seismic data suggested. The cap rock had lost most of its original cohesion. Under stress, it did not snap. It crumbled. When scientists mapped the cumulative energy budget, the picture was clear. The crust was not just absorbing stress. It was being hollowed out from within. Its ability to contain the restless system below fading with each passing month. Relentless weakening. The pressure cooker metaphor resonated for a reason. In a healthy system, the crust acts as a thick, resilient wall. But at Campi Flagre, every slow, wasteful earthquake is like a spoon scraping the inside of the pot. Quiet at first, but relentless. The question is no longer whether the lid can hold, but how much longer it can withstand the pressure before a new pathway is forced open. Gas monitors in the Solfatara crater now record the highest output rates since modern measurements began. Carbon dioxide and sulfur emissions, once steady, have climbed sharply since 2022, mirroring the upward curve of ground deformation. Satellite radar and GPS stations scattered across Pozzuoli and the Caldera Rim show the land rising at an accelerating pace with more than 1.4 meters of uplift measured since 2005. The shape of the uplift is no longer a gentle dome. It is taking on a parabolic curve, steepening in a way that suggests the system is not just swelling, but actively straining against its own limits. Earthquakes, too, are changing. The swarm of small tremors that once seemed scattered now clusters along a newly defined fault plane, trending northwest to southeast beneath the Sidious Heart. More than half of the seismic energy since 2023 has concentrated on this developing fault, which extends from depths of one to four kilometers. This is not a diffuse pattern of unrest. It is the signature of a system organizing itself, focusing stress along a weakness that could become a future rupture pathway. The monitoring data points to a system evolving toward a crossroads. Scientists describe two possible futures, each shaped by the interplay of gas pressure, cap rock integrity, and fault development. In one scenario, the fractured cap rock continues to leak allowing gas to vent steadily through old fissures and new micro-cracks. Pressure would be relieved, the system might stabilize, and the recent surge of activity could eventually subside. In the other scenario, the Caprock S remaining strength is overwhelmed. Gas accumulates faster than it can escape, uplift accelerates, and the newly organized fault acts as a conduit. The brittle lid, already riddled with fractures, could fail suddenly, triggering a phreatic explosion, or, if magma rises, a full-scale eruption. The evidence for both outcomes is visible in the data streams pouring into the Vesuvius Observatory. Gas output is rising, land uplift is quickening, and earthquakes are becoming more frequent and more focused. The developing fault beneath Pozzuoli is not just a line on a map, it is a real physical weakness a possible gateway between the pressurized depths and the densely populated surface above. Scientists are watching for signs of either stabilization or runaway acceleration, knowing that the system's next move could determine the fate of half a million people. The choices made now by researchers, emergency planners, and the public will shape the region's readiness for whatever comes next. Civil protection officials gathered in Pozzuoli's municipal hall. Their voices strained as they addressed the rising tide of concern. Scientists from the Vesuvius Observatory, joined by outside experts, urged local authorities to consider temporary exclusion zones, especially in the neighborhoods closest to the new seismic fault. While there was no unified call for a sweeping two-kilometer evacuation, 
the message was clear. The current emergency plans would be tested as never before. On October 11, 2025, sirens echoed through the city at dawn. Nearly 12,000 residents took part in a full-scale evacuation rehearsal, the largest of its kind since the 1980s. School children filed onto buses, hospital staff wheeled patients through crowded corridors, and elderly residents waited on curbs with overnight bags. Within an hour, traffic on the main arteries, SS7 Quattro Palme and Via Campi Flegre, ground to a halt. Cars idled for blocks, emergency vehicles struggled to pass, and, and confusion rippled through neighborhoods where news of the drill had arrived late or not at all. Civil protection teams tried to direct the flow, but bottlenecks formed at every major intersection. Some families abandoned vehicles and set out on foot, while others returned home, frustrated by the gridlock. The official after-action report, released days later, acknowledged the shortcomings, insufficient routes, gaps in public communication, and delays in reaching vulnerable residents. The mayor of Pozzuoli, speaking to reporters, called the exercise necessary but sobering, pointing to the urgent need for better coordination. Beneath the pressure of these drills, a deeper anxiety simmered. Residents questioned whether the city could ever evacuate safely, if the warning came for real. Scientists and officials alike faced a narrowing window to bridge the gap between risk and readiness. As the volcano's signals grew louder and the margin for error shrank. No one in Pozzuoli or the surrounding red zone can say what comes next. Scientists at the Vesuvius Observatory now issue daily bulletins, but every update carries the same message. There is no way to predict the timing or outcome of the unrest beneath Campi Flegre. The monitoring networks, GPS stations, seismometers, gas sensors, feed streams of data into computers day and night. Yet even the most sophisticated models cannot offer a countdown or a clear answer. The system is being watched more closely than ever before. This immense by Swansbury. But the signals remain ambiguous. Some days the ground is quiet. On others, a cluster of small earthquakes rattles windows and nerves. The only certainty is that the crust is weaker than it has been in living memory, and the pressure from below is rising. Preparedness has become a way of life. Emergency drills are scheduled with little warning. Parents keep bags packed by the door. Still, the prospect of a real evacuation, one that is not a rehearsal, feels both immediate and impossibly remote. Local officials urge calm but also remind residents to stay alert for sirens or text alerts. Scientists repeat the same refrain in interviews and public meetings, cannot predict the exact moment. We can only prepare. A resident on Via Napoli, whose family has lived in the same apartment for three generations, sums up the mood. We are used to the ground moving, but this time, no one knows when it will stop or what will happen if it doesn't. The uncertainty hangs over every decision, every ordinary day. The crust beneath Campi Flegre is changing, and with it, the lives of everyone above it. There is no resolution, only the imperative to watch, to wait, and to be ready for whatever the volcano decides to do next. Today, sensors record each tremor as Campi Flegre's crust thins further. With over 500,000 people living atop this volatile system, every new fracture tests the limits of planning and trust. Scientific warnings grow sharper, yet the timeline remains unknowable. The world now watches, not for distant disaster, but for the moment when science and society must finally decide, wait or move.